Hi everyone, this is Julia. And this is Chris, and this is episode number 28 of Mixology Talk Podcast. Last week, we promised you an interview with an internet celebrity, but we actually had to switch things around a little bit, so we moved that interview back a few months. You'll definitely see it sometime in 2015. And as for this week, I think it's time that we talk about some of the things that bartenders and home in, uh, cocktail enthusiasts do that can undermine their credibility as craft cocktail creators. We're going to be talking about five things that make you look like an amateur. I hope I'm not guilty of any of these. Oh, I think I've broken every one of these rules. So <laughs> so just don't listen to us here. <laughs> Pretty much. So we're going to do this countdown style, and we're starting with number five, using herbs incorrectly. So this is a bit of a catch-all because there are a lot of ways to use herbs incorrectly. To keep this short, here are two tips. In general, herbs need a little motivation to express their flavor and aroma, so I always encourage people to give them a quick little spank before dropping the sprig of mint into their drink. On the other hand, herbs don't need that much motivation. I am a fan of a great mojito, but I can't tell you how many times I've had a bitter drink because the bartender took out all the night's aggression on my poor innocent mint. Yeah, guys, um, this is something that, you know, you're not breaking up concrete, so you don't need to get in there and just work this mint over. You might be, but that would be a really terrible yeah. mojito. <laughs> but yeah, if you over muddle mint or herbs, uh, what will happen is it'll become a lot more bitter and it kind of ruins the bright, fresh flavor that you're going for when you're muddling mint. And that's because the bitterness is kind of in the, the, the woody parts of the leaf, right? Yeah, they can be in the veins. So once mm -hmm. you start to break all these things apart, then um, from my understanding, I think it's like there's chlorophyll or there's some other enzyme in there that becomes bitter. Got it. And can become present in the cocktail. So That makes sense. So you want the leafy goodness, not the twiggy badness. <laughs> right. And that's just good advice. I'm going to make a t-shirt out of that. <laughs> We're on a roll. Was that two t-shirts now? I know. <laughs> so go ahead and muddle your mint. That's fine. Just don't go crazy. Exactly. Take, take out your aggressions with a shaker, maybe. Yeah. Not the muddler. So um, the next one, number four, is dirty ice in your cocktails. Dirty ice. That just sounds unsanitary. It's pretty dirty, let's be honest here. Um, <laughs> but it's not in a reference to like dropping your ice on the floor and then building a cocktail on it. Um, it's actually a um, reference to a two-step process that a lot of bartenders forget. So step number one, you should shake or stir your cocktail in ice. And step two is you should be serving your cocktail in a glass with fresh ice. And that word fresh is really the key. So when you say fresh ice, what you mean is the the ice that's put into the glass that you serve the cocktail with is not the same ice that the drink was shaken or stirred with. Exactly. Well, I don't understand, though. What's so, what's so bad about it? So there's a couple different reasons. Um, first, shaking or stirring a drink will definitely break up um, the ice into smaller pieces. And when you break off those edges, you generally make it look a little bit rough. So if you've seen a martini that's... A lot of people like them to shake the hell out of it, and I want to be able to skate across the top of that art martini. Um, <laughs> That's because there's a bunch of ice on the top. Exactly, and what happens to ice is it melts and it starts to water down the cocktail. I like to call ice future dilution. Exactly. Yeah. T-shirt number it's three. True. <laughs> and it can take away a little bit of that visual appeal. I mean, we are in the customer service business, so if somebody requests it, you better believe I'm going to shake the living hell out of it. So, um, But in general, you want to um, separate those two things out. So shake and stir over one set of ice and present the cocktail in another set of ice, fresh ice. Yeah, I really think this step, is, it shows extra care and attention to detail. Just like chefs put care into plating a dish, this, this additional step makes your final drink look great and shows that you really want that... Um, that really beautiful presentation. Yeah, and one thing I uh, almost forgot to mention is the smaller the ice, like the dirty ice that you use to shake, is generally a lot smaller than um, fresh ice, so it'll actually dilute the cocktail a lot faster as well. Exactly, exactly. So it doesn't just look uglier, it actually dilutes faster. Right, so number three I guess we're on to now, right? Numero trace. Yeah, is uh, don't forget to use that citrus oil. So citrus oil is definitely one of your friends. Um, I think we mentioned this in one of our previous podcasts. I think it was the Secret Ingredients podcast. Yeah, but it's definitely worth mentioning here. So when you garnish with citrus rind, use a little bit of spritz of that oil right across the cocktail. It's going to make a huge difference in your drink. What I love about this is that it takes almost no time at all. This, this step takes two seconds, and it really does make an incredible difference in the aroma and the taste of the final drink. Yeah, and if you want a, like a first-hand experience with this, you can do this in water if you just express a little bit of oil across water, 
it makes a big difference on the flavor. You, it really imparts a lot of flavor into just water. Yeah, it really surprised me. I always thought that you had to have like a full wedge of lemon in there, but it really makes a big difference. Yeah. And the other thing is if you're using egg whites in a drink, I highly recommend either using a spritz of citrus oil across the top or using bitters to kind of mask some of that eggy smell that you get from, uh, from egg whites as well. Yeah, you don't want to be digging into your drink and smelling a whole bunch of egg. Yeah, or like a burnt matchstick, like all that sulfur or something oh, like yeah, that. Oh, yeah, not good, not good. <laughs> We're getting close to the top of the list. For number two, I'm going to go ahead and say not using fresh juice. And I'll throw in a caveat. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble here. Yeah. <laughs> so not I, I fully acknowledge that not every bar is a craft bar. And as a bartender, sometimes you just have to work with what you've got. I get that. But for cocktail lovers or anybody who could possibly get their hands on fresh juice, it really is a must. Yeah, I agree. I, I know it's kind of a pain to kind of keep fresh citrus around. But typically, you know, one or two pieces from the grocery store every week. And you should have fresh citrus around all the time. And let's be honest. If the citrus starts to add up, well, you just make a bunch of cocktails. Exactly. Just call us over. <laughs> we'll help you out with that. Absolutely. So using fresh juice is a really easy step that makes a huge difference for your drinks. If you're working in a craft bar, you're probably already using the fresh stuff. And if you're working in a bar that wants to take their cocktails to the next level, this is probably the first suggestion that I would make. So go ahead, switch out that sweet and sour mix for some fresh citrus and simple syrup. No, no, do it. I'll wait. Yeah. <laughs> I think you'll be convinced. Yeah, and um, this also brings up a really good point as well, is that there are certain cocktails that if you were to use sweet and sour in replacement of fresh citrus juice, you actually can't make the, cor- the correct cocktail. Yeah, because of exactly what it's called, sweet and sour. You don't have the ability to make it sweeter or sour. It's yeah. just done. Yeah, so for example, you can't make a last word correctly if you're using sweet and sour. And you know what? I've had that last word made incorrectly, and we know. <laughs> it's so obvious. Right. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Um, you're limiting your ability to, to make fantastic cocktails by using um, sweet and sour. So the last one, the shiny number one here, is probably one of my biggest pet peeves. It's true. And that you- is knowing the difference between shaking and stirring and when to do it. Man, you do not want to see this guy if he's been given a shaken Manhattan. Oh, oh, it's horrible. Why would you ruin a masterpiece like that when all you have to do is just a little bit extra care and the end product is going to be so much better, in my opinion? So how are you going to know when to shake and when to stir? You know, um, this might have been one of the things that we touched on earlier, but in general, if something is all alcohol or all clear um, products, Mm -hmm. then typically you want to stir it. If it contains juices, creams, eggs... Um, anything that really needs to be incorporated well, then you want to go ahead and shake all these ingredients together. Yeah, I just generally think of uh, opacity, which is, you know, if the, if it, if all your ingredients are clear, stir it. If it, they're not clear, then shake it. And that's, and I know that's a total generalization. Opacity. Opac- it's a big word. I learned it today. Just kidding. It's a big one. That's good. I like that. <laughs> I'm going to have to look that one up later. But usually the rule of thumb is just citrus juice. If there's citrus juice in there, you absolutely must shake it. It's it's going to be really necessary to get it fully incorporated into the drink. Well, that about wraps it up. So uh, what have we missed? Definitely let us know if there are other things that you look for that show you if a bartender knows what they're doing. So uh, calling all cocktail snobs. Leave those comments over at mixologytalk.com slash the number 28. So uh, what's coming next week? So, you know, it's definitely coming, getting colder out here, and that means we're working with a lot of different ingredients in cocktails right now. So come back next week for an episode all about our favorite cold weather drinks. For all the notes from today's show, head on over to mixologytalk.com slash 28. All right, everyone. We'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers. Never miss an episode by subscribing in iTunes or YouTube. And as always, check out the show notes by clicking on the right.